Today's Ring Tale review, we're going to be taking a look at the sequel to Inazuma 11, Inazuma 11 2 Blizzard for the DS. The gameplay you're seeing is the Blizzard version of the game, uh, as voted by the power of the people on my community tab. Check it out for future polls on various things, or even join the Discord to keep up to date with everything. So let's kick things off with the story, and it's clear as soon as you start the game, there's going to be a bigger focus on the story here, uh, as there's so much packed into the intro. Uh, just going over what's happened since the end of the first game, between what's about to go down right now at Raimon. Now, personally, I'm going to have a hot take here. I'm not, the, I'm not a lover of story in any kind of game. Uh, but I do appreciate some from time to time. Uh, unfortunately, this isn't one of those times as... I feel like the over-the-top narrative of the aliens invading Earth and wanting to play football is really flat. Like, don't get me wrong, it's not terrible by any means. It gives us creative characters on both the alien side and uh, the ones we meet during our quest. However, I'm just not a fan of the way they told the story as it follows this template. Beat this team, but there's suddenly a stronger team that you didn't know about, and now you need to beat them. Rinse and repeat, kind of gets tiring, especially when you defeat, you finally get to defeat Gemini Storm after playing all those games with them getting humbled each time, only for them to do the exact same thing with Epsilon. Just kind of turn, it's, it's like this, uh, and even like this, it's the same with Genesis as well when they like reveal Genesis and then they beat your ass and then you then beat their ass uh, eventually and yeah, it really starts to show cracks really early. The game pulls no punches with how this new coach handles like every situation. Like, we were all really surprised when Goenji gets booted from the team. Uh, I think everyone's reaction when they were playing the game for the first time had the same reaction as the players when they were hearing uh, that Goenji uh, is off the team. I really enjoyed the arc Goenji goes through during this game uh, as by going away from uh, Raimon, getting booted from the team by the new coach. He's not putting his sister at risk of any harm from the, the three creepy alien guys and seeing how much it kills him that he can't step in when we, the viewer, know how much of an integral part of Raimon he is and how much he means to the main character Endo is really good and it's really well like, really well paced in my opinion. I really, really was uh, getting uh, invested in that story arc. I found this out really late, but it turns out when, depending on the version you're playing, either Fubuki or Goenji will get the more story time, and to be completely honest, I really didn't notice that during the replay of both Firestorm and Blizzard, like granted I wasn't paying much attention to the story, but it's, it still is a feature you would kind of like pick up on, oh this seems a bit different, or oh, things are doing things differently in this game. That, you know, that kind of way, and I just didn't notice that for some reason, so maybe it's just minor tweaks that the, the version exclusives have brought into it, which, yeah, I'm a big fan of, I'm, I'm a big fan of the version exclusive, uh, like, content we can get. It keeps get, uh, all the games kind of fresh in that way. Moving on to something a bit more positive, uh, we get to look at the new characters being introduced as we're travelling. Uh, I really like this. Uh, learn about each character and what they're about is... is Fun, create, and it creates depth for them, so that we can have, uh, they can have a, a better thrive at a later date. And each location, the characters uh, you meet are really well structured uh, and thought out. Although, I'll get to that later on. There's a time during Chapter Nine when you're attacked by the post games team's captain, Burn or Gazelle. But an unlike the ally ages, I throw day from Zeus that steps in. That is really cool. Seeing the final boss's captain step in an AJ during your quest against the new threat is awesome. And it's a, a great callback to the first game. After a little scuffle, I throw day offers to help Raimon boost their ability even more by having a friendly against them. As a Zeus fan, this is one of my favourite parts of any like game I've played in an Inazuma game. And speaking with a little bit of hindsight here, I cannot stress enough how cool this was like being able to challenge like a revigorated Zeus and have the, the opportunity to recruit all of their players right after that friendly. It was like one of the best things about this game for me and it was it was well crafted because in the same kind of way like prior to this you were kind of like you had the option of going and fighting or playing against the old uh, football frontier teams from the old game. They were kicking about in each location and as you beat one you can uh, go challenge the other and that kind of was the simple 
like um, process. It kind of stopped at Kirakawa's issue. Um, after that, it was uh, radio silent on where Zeus was, and to see that they were actually a story implemented team, and having them act and be like this powerful team is really really cool. I'm such a huge fan of this whole entire chapter of chapter nine. And yeah, it's massive, massive bonus points for me. Something else I really liked was the whole Dark Emperor's angle they went with for the final boss. I love seeing all the heart players, plus three random dudes, come back and have their like this vendetta against Endo and Raimon. I love how the Alien Meteorite can also alter people's appearances, making them more wilder, driven by power. It's such a cool thing to see. And all, to see all these players get reignited, big fan of that, big fan of that. However, that does it's kind of a double-edged sword here in the sense that there are three random dudes that had no kind of story ties to the, you know what I mean, to this, uh, this the game here with uh, Nishikage, uh, Shadow and Sugimori. Like, why are they there? You know what I mean? It, it feels to me that because of, like, there wasn't enough like depth for the players getting injured they kind of had to sub in three random dudes and that kind of takes it out a little bit for me uh it's not a bad thing in here mind you but it's it kind of just um kind of uh takes me out of it just a little bit let's move on to the gameplay here so the gameplay is mostly the same but what level 5 has done is exactly what i wanted from them for my sequel that being not changing a whole lot but improving things here and there uh this time uh, in addition to everything we have in the first game, they've added long shots, uh, which as the name suggests is allow you, allows you to just launch one from distance. Love that idea, and how it works in game, fantastic, it's, it's really really cool, I'm a big fan of that. Another new feature is something called Alter Eagles, which is pretty much so they can show off a player with DID. Jokes aside, um, this is one of the best features, but it's executed really poorly. This is one of those features that lets level 5 be creative with players and make f like fun players with it. This is perfect for characters like Tashi Mikai and Endo as they get their roles swapped during the story. So having them unlock an alter ego kind of section here would have been really cool to see. But alas, uh, the only player to get this feature was Fubuki, Koguru and a few Epsilon players. Such a shame to see this get completely wasted because it really was like a, a gold mine here. Like, you know that one meme where it's like the miner like walking away from like an absolute diamond like overhaul? That's kind of what level 5 had here with alter egos and it's, kinda, and it's just it's just a shame to see. The locations of this game has been expanded tenfold. Instead of being limited to just Tokyo, we're now, uh, we now have access to the whole of Japan, which, big fan. Each location has been crafted uh, very carefully so that there's so much in each area that you can get like lost in absorbance like the vibes. Like with me, I absolutely adore going to the town in Hokkaido and just listening to this beautiful OST and just strolling around. It's not a big area, it's only two uh, maps, but it's just so charming that I couldn't help myself. Uh, actually, when I had to go away from stream, I just plapped myself right uh, in the centre of the town and just had the viewers listening to the music. Each area has that level of love put into them and it's really nice seeing attention and care being put into these locations as we players explore. It also helps that we see those familiar faces as I mentioned before while you're exploring those there's those these new areas and you can challenge them, that being the Football Frontier teams, and unlock them via Taijin route, then you can recruit them. Uh, all from Furukabu. They're optional too, so you don't even need to pay any attention to them, and I love things like that. optional challenges and optional things in games, like hidden details and whatnot. Super, super fan of. For the most part, the AI still feel the same, but they've done something really cool to the alien players, where like they perform much better, but they burn out like really rapid. It's like a double-edged sword in that uh, sense, because with uh, all their exclusive moves that are super good in the game, they, they have a lot of priority. But as a result of this, the players have really low TP and that really balances out the, the whole system here. This is one of the features that I really love because it makes the Alia players so unique and different that you have to, it's kind of like a, a new genre of player here. You know, it separates them from normal scouts and recruits and having kind of like that third class 
in an RPG, so you know we'll get warrior and archer, and now a mage added to the mix. It's a bit of a weird analogy, but I hope I, I hope you get what I mean. This is something I didn't really cover in the last review, so I'll be doing a little cover of the sound design in the game. Uh, the sounds mostly carry over from the same game, which is completely fine. The reason I'm mentioning this is because I would have loved to have heard some diverse OSTs during my time playing. Uh, and it really annoyed me that I was listening to the three same songs repeatedly. Don't get me wrong, there is variation in this time round. It's not completely like the first game where it was just the same for everything, but this is not enough difference for me to forgive it. There's a ton of great OSC in the music library that this game features. I know this because as a kid I would use this OSTs all the time, just straight from the DS I was playing on. Uh, the complete lack of unique OSTs during play uh, and battles is just really disappointing. Overall, the game is a massive, massive improvement from its predecessor, adding things like better recruitment, more locations, and a whole lot of new characters. It's a fantastic way to expand the series, and I'm really pumped for the next game down the line. My score for Inazuma 11 2 Blizzard and Firestorm is 4.5 star out of 5. There is still a few things that leave me wanting more out of this game, but overall, it's still the best in the uh, the best game in the series currently. Let me know what you think of this review in the comments, or join my Discord in the description and share your opinion there. But with that said, I'm off.